Insisting to practice. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Talk About Your Daily Bite of DGen, episode number 180, coming to you live from Crypto Monday, New York City. And we are here with Dr. Alex. Hi, how are you today? Excellent. Thanks for having me. Hey, so you just stopped, talked. What was your topic tonight at Crypto Monday, New York? Well, it was about uh, blockchain and healthcare, how to blockchain healthcare and how to healthify the crypto space. Okay. Uh, and what's a little bit of your pedigree and where you come from? Where's your healthcare knowledge stop and your blockchain knowledge begin oh man uh, when you when you get my age you're kind of old but i had a full academic career for almost uh, 30 years in uh, pain medicine so i built a lot of pain medicine uh, uh departments all over the world and uh, i would want to say since 2013 got really interested in uh technology and got acquainted with blockchain started to read about it, learn about it, then talk about it. And now people say, okay, uh, you have something to say about it. So I've been saying something about it since. Nice. Uh, and so one of the things you talked about tonight was a little bit of off-chain data storage with on-chain DIDs, DIDs, you know, digital identifications. Do you believe that there will be a time where data can be stored on-chain? I think that that's not even uh, an issue that is 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 really important. We, that we don't. I don't think that we need all medical data to be on a chain. You know, if you think of uh, distributed or decentralized data uh, ledgers as a database, it's not really a fast and 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 easily scalable data. So I think that there are other solutions. What I do think is that you want to make sure that the data is attack proof sensor proof and collusion proof and there are ways to do it by either on chain or hybrid or other sorts and and then not only that piece but also meeting regulatory requirements like hipaa and so forth there's been talk of either a cross hybrid model of that where even ai could then rec recognize uh one person's data as if it's all in one source rather than fractionalized like it is now between different doctors and different healthcare pieces um, do you believe AI has a big piece in this, in the future of this? Absolutely. I, I always say that, you know, like bacon makes everything better. Everything is better with blockchain. And so blockchain does a lot of things. Uh, and in regard to data, what you and AI, what you want to know is the provenance of the data. And so I, I always say it's unfortunate we call it uh, blockchain because the fact that it's saved in blocks and not other, you know, uh, um, forms is, is irrelevant. I, I would prefer that we adhere to Satoshi's original when he called the time chain. It's really going all the way back and see where it comes from. So provenance of data, integrity of data, the fact that it is tamper proof, you can't putz around with it. I think that those are the features that will make AI more reliable and more pristine and uh, uh, less susceptible to all kinds of uh, impurities, if you wish. Do you think, following the lines of time chain, do you think that personal chains then will have a future? Absolutely. I think that the, the trouble is that today, 2023, we think in terms of legal or regulatory framework, we think of data only in terms of security and privacy. Uh, privacy more in the EU, security more here in the US. But we don't talk at all about sovereignty, about ownership. And I think it's, and again, this is my opinion, take it or leave it, is that you are your actions. Your actions are captured by data. And that data is stored somewhere. So if a third party uses it, abuses it, or loses it, they take a piece of you. And so this is not just, oh, you know, I want a kind of a piece of the economic activity. This has to do with your dignity. And I don't like the idea that there are third parties that are doing stuff and they're not asking me, or it's written in font three and page 147 on my, you know, agreement uh, 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 contract. So I think that the more we talk about uh, uh, data like money, and I'm not talking about monetization of data, but data like money, in other words, it's yours. It has, transferable. It's transferable. It's, it has to be in your wallet, in a secure wallet. You can pull it out. You can pull out that money whenever, wherever, for whatever reason. Provoke access. You exactly you you uh, know it has value, but you want to invest in it so that value will accrue, and then afterwards you say, "I want to give it to my nears and dears. I want to donate it." If we think about data with the same seriousness that we think about like our cash, then we'd be in a good place. So then this might be a hot seat question, and okay to pass on it. Do you think uh, one of the biggest issues right now with data centralization is hacks and release of data and HIPAA violations. These fines that are slipped on people aren't really big enough to make them make any changes. 
do you think that that might change? Like the reason there's any movement against personal ownership is that then they would have if their data, someone's data was then released, they would owe personal reparations rather than to just an agency that might be smaller. I don't think that that's the main issue. I think that you're touching on a couple of points that are really important. The fir first point is that. The, people say that healthcare is broken. It's not broken. The system is doing exactly what it was designed for. But what it was designed for is to work on consumption, on data asymmetry, and excluding you from the economic activity. So I agree that the incumbents don't want you to be part of that economic activity. So it's like, okay, uh, how about I have everything, you have nothing, because you're the product and you're for free. So I think that we sold out too much for convenience. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to use my own wallet. God forbid I have to click twice and not once. It's too high of a price. We've been sold this thing about, oh, if you don't tell us everything about yourself, we can't keep you safe. Nonsense. I can keep myself safe very well. And we always think that I can take care of myself, but the other person can. So these are like these, these uh, misalignments and these stories that were sold that are just actually not true. There are real reasons why there are incumbents that don't want this business model to change because it serves them very well. That if I make my money from data asymmetry, which is a fancy way of saying, I know something, I know you and I know him, but you don't know him, so you gotta pay me now to know him. That's a racket. So, so I think that we can dress it up and say HIPAA. We can dress it up and say, we want to protect investors. Oh, we want to make it. That, that's all, that's all just pretend. The real thing is where's the money flow? And that it is, it, it serves this friction, this capital leakage, this, these intermediaries that are making their life off it, a peer to peer technology would have to make them rethink their value and change the way they do things. Okay, so the piece that I want to follow up on this is I got into crypt crypto in blockchain Bitcoin in 2011. So most people ask, think, I assume I'm just a proof of work guy. I recognize different systems, proof of work, proof of stake, proof of history, hybrids, uh, gossip about gossip, different consensus models. What is your maxi on that? Proof of work, proof of stake, proof of history, Proof of identity? I would say proof of X, because what people fail to understand is that the proof of that starts from a technical aspect is actually, if you take a step back, philosophical. It's like if I'm in a DAO and you want to reward a certain behavior, that rate of reward is going to be the proof of. So if I'm like saying a knowledge marketplace where tokenization or the value is going to be knowing stuff, Okay, it's going to be three activities. It's going to be to uh, 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 um, consume knowledge, to curate knowledge, and then to create knowledge. So how are you going to tokenize that? How are you going to build? It's going to be proof of knowledge. And so, you can, so, so whatever you put after the X is meaningless. It might not be meaningless in terms of technical terms of how do you actually organize it and what is going to be the, the order. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to minimize the, the technical aspects of it, but people kind of walk around thinking about, oh, it's just like two separate things and it's not, you know, proof of work versus proof of stake and they're looking at the, the difference governed. Those are secondary to what you want to achieve from the beginning. And every marketplace, every DAO has an organic activity that needs to be captured and quantify it. Once you quantify it, then you can exchange it. You can trade it, and then when you can trade it, you can exchange it, and that's your proof of X. Um, I, I love that piece, because then it also sort of goes almost to not even the proof of work side, but the hash to it. Cryptography is one of the biggest points of that proof of something was done. Um, I don't know, what's the, what's the follow-up now? What, is, what, is, what, what are you bullish on in the future? What blockchain are you looking at? Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. That not the NFA, but no, for technology side, for so, movement of this. So I, I would say like this, what interests me most, and that's because I'm a doctor, and because I'm interested in people, is non-transferable NFTs. Soulbound tokens. Exactly, SBTs. And so it doesn't mean that there aren't, is in room for fungibles. It doesn't mean, you know, each of the layer ones and layer twos have their own flavors and where I want more security, I'll do this. Whatever. And, you know, and you know the people and say, I can work with these guys, but I can't work with those guys. I'm not going into that. But in terms of healthcare has non-fungible elements in it and has fungible elements in it. And uh, uh, just as much as I don't think that 
it'll be one token fits all. I think that for me, the interesting uh, vehicle that can, can capture the uniqueness of everyone in that aspect of time, it's going to be that SBT where from the beginning, that's who you are, and you have those different personas, Alex the doctor, Alex the patient, Alex the crypto, the degen or the crypto anarchist, or Alex the professor in the university who's wearing a tie. So it allows you to, to, to follow that, and afterwards, like we said, tokenize, quantify trade, and, and, uh, and get a return on what you're doing. Um, if uh, someone wanted to follow you, are, are you on social media? I'm on LinkedIn. I try to avoid everything else. As a doctor, I know Twitter is just a cesspool for personality disorders. So why do you think I'm there? So exactly. <laughs> and so my name is Taco, by the way. How, let's let's go with that. Let's start there. So so it, I only because I'm a boomer. Uh, uh, I'm only on LinkedIn, and I and I post regularly. And if anybody just reads it, they get into my head, they can DM me, they have, they have my email on it. It's all, uh, otherwise, it's just a cognitive overload. And most people don't want to hear what I have to say, so it fits me fine. So I want to finish this conversation at a later date because, yes, I do. You're amazing. Uh, you're a rock star, even though the Super Bowl yesterday says we're not supposed to call people rock stars now. Um, but so uh, the, the the Gen X in me says, why aren't you on Entra, which is the Web3 version of LinkedIn? But where can people find, what is your full LinkedIn profile? So um, I, I'm, my name is Dr. Alex Kahana, C-A-H-A-N-A. And I think I'm called uh, uh, Dr. Kahana block changer, or health block changer or something like that. But there's only one Kahana, you know, in there. So, and I know that for a fact because someone was talking to me, oh, did you meet that doctor that's in blockchain? And they said, oh, you spoke to Alex. So I'm in a very lonely place. So I would say, if you're the leader or the expert, yeah, when N equals one, that's not tough. I, I found uh, two years ago when I changed my profile uh, work to DGEN, I was the only one and I had to create that role. There's now over 30,000 people with that role in, in LinkedIn. I was like, yes, I started something. Um, it has been amazing talking to you. 10 seconds, final shot in the dark, words of wisdom. What I would say is what my sergeant taught me decades ago is one day we'll laugh about this. It just won't be today. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. I'll see you and I will find you on LinkedIn. Absolutely. All right. All right. You know what they say? Attention is the purest form of generosity. And the fact that you paid attention, you've been more than general, so I appreciate it. Attention is also our largest asset, you know? So why should you not be rewarded for it? But, all right, but, all right so we have uh, two other DGENs here. Who do we have with us now? I am one, I am an NFT artist, I am a creative, and I am a collector. Did you say your name is of one? One. one. Oh, I thought you said of one. I, I was like, oh, uh, one. <laughs> okay, that is amazing. Nice to meet you, one. Pleasure, pleasure. Taco. Pleasure we have a little bit in co common because my my full name is Player One Taco, so you're in the middle of me. Okay, it's the beard and the hat, too. We got beard? We, got, we do. Uh, so, how long have you been in blockchain for? I've been in blockchain since 2020. Uh, I started buying crypto. Um, I learned about crypto back in 2016. I didn't jump in then, and I've been kicking myself in the ass ever since. Okay, okay. What was the first crypto you bought? Uh, the first crypto I bought was Bitcoin. Okay, what was the first NFT you bought? The first NFT that I bought was a project called MetaSharks that rugged. Okay, hey, the first NFT I bought was a fake Ether rock. So, um, what was the best thing you bought in 2022? The best thing that I bought in 2022 uh, is... Whether it's value, whether it was the experience or the community, the funnest one you had or the best one, however you want to say that. In 2022, actually, I, the best thing that I bought into was actually recently. It wasn't even in 2022. Uh, it was a Kane Mayfield, which is a music NFT. And um, it, I bought into that project because I actually believed in the musician and the artist and I loved his message. Uh, I'm more of a collector than a degen, So I, I buy into artists that I like and I appreciate. I like to say, I'm, that's another term for me. Of whole, I like to hold to zero. 
Okay, yeah, yeah, that, like I believe that there's a difference between collector culture and DJ culture, and I say that all the time. Whereas, like, I'm a collector, I don't buy into NFTs to flip, I'm more of a like you said, I hold to zero. Yeah, I do buy some NFTs, I buy in threes usually. Okay, that's one, you know, uh, one to hold, one to do something funky with, or if it just skyrockets, and the third one, you know, to flip to make profit on, on, on all three total, I usually end up holding all three. <laughs> And then I usually end up gifting one away or something like that. Because that's how I get brought into a lot of communities. I get one of the best communities I ever got brought into was uh, it used to be called the, the whitelist, but now it's called the aces. Uh, Black founder really wanted to take on adversary with calling the whitelist and stuff like that. And Jordan's an amazing founder. They ended, ended up buying a basketball team. That was not part of the roadmap. Jordan, that was not part of the roadmap, sir. But it's cool. So now I'm part owner of a basketball team, but that's how I got brought in literally on the middle of the street in Austin. I got airdropped, you know? So, and they're like, now you're going to this party. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, it, amazing people. So let's, I think that was probably the best community. I didn't buy it. Well, I bought more because that's the best way to show support. So where, where can people find you on social? Uh, you can find me at one got beats on Twitter and skull hunters NFTs on Instagram. Can you spell that out for the algorithm? Oh, sure. It's uh, O N E G O T B E A T S on Twitter and skull hunters is S K U L L H U N T E R S and F T S on Instagram. Nice. Okay. Nice. Um, I had one person once, they then spelt out Instagram afterwards, too. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're spelling everything now. I'm like, okay, cool. But they were so smart, and they were just in it. It was just fun. Um, so what kind of art are you creating? Are you creating music NFTs? Are you creating art NFTs? Or is it just all considered art to you in that point? Um, so initially, I started off as a PFP project. Uh, the first two series, the first two phases of the project is the PFPs. And now I'm transitioning into the third series of our project, which are actually like um, one of one 3D scenes. Um, some of them are animated. Some of them are just uh, still 3D images. Um, and all of them have music produced by me on them. Nice. Yeah. Shout out to Ella and God Hands. Come check this guy out. Yeah, definitely do. Um, so have you heard of Pigeons of New York? Yes, I have actually. I love Pigeons of New York. All right, Pidgeys. Oh yeah, you, they're get coming out with round three right now. Oh, they are. All right, okay. I'm I'm, I'm a little uh, behind on my my DJ culture, but um, yeah, I've seen their art. I love their stuff. It's really dope. Okay, uh, so we're here tonight, Crypto Mondays. Uh, what did you think? What you what brought you here tonight? Was it just Crypto Monday, or was it Dr. Alex, or a combination, or a little, a little bit of both? Um, I'm I'm. I have a rapport with the host of Crypto Mondays. I've been coming to Crypto Mondays for about a year now, on and off. So um, I actually took a small hiatus. I was on vacation, and I wanted to come back and just, you know, dive in. And I'm actually glad that this is the first Crypto Monday I've been to in a while. And uh, the conversation was great. I love everything that, you know, that was said. And uh, Dr. Alex was great. Yeah. What was one of the biggest things you took away from Dr. Alex? I think um, the fact that we all identify, we all are in Web3, and we may identify things as differently, but we all have that same Web3 behavior, which is peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Uh, thoughts on when he was talking about DIDs and SSIs and self-sovereignty? Uh, I, I love the idea of putting... Um, putting medical records on a blockchain. I think that soulbound tokens are definitely the future. Um, and I, I, as, as someone who's married to uh, someone in the medical field, um, I'm very interested in seeing how blockchain technology changes how we, um, how we deal with the medical, um, the medical industry. Uh, what are your current favorite blockchains right now? Uh, bull, um, bullish on Ethereum. I'm, I'm an Ethereum maxi. I, I must say, yeah. No other chain. Um, I, 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 I'm blockchain agnostic. I buy a little bit of everything, but um, you know, I'm I hold mostly Ethereum. Layer twos, Optimism, Arbitrum. I think Polygon is dope. Uh, I've I've spoke to a lot of people that are doing work in Polygon. Uh, as a Crypto Monday person, we've we've uh, spoke to a lot of the people with Polygon, and I see a lot of the stuff that's happening there. Um, 
it's it's one of those things. I have a love hate relationship with Polygon, but I think that they're doing that. They are going to be um, a heavy competitor in the future as far as layer tools. Nice. Uh, even moving to a layer one in a layer one piece as well. I, I in my opinion. Uh, what about Solana? Um, I have a love hate relationship with with Solana. Uh, do you do you have a Solana wallet on you right now? A I, do, I have a Phantom wallet. Ooh, maybe we might be giving you an NFT. Let's make it happen. I'm with it. Okay, so then, have you heard of Beefy Finance? Beefy Finance? No, I haven't. You haven't heard of Beefy Finance? I will give you an NFT if you pull out your phone and you go to Beefy Finance right now. I will do that. And, and, it's, and I will say that the NFT has two zeros in its name. If you can think of NFTs that might have two zeros side by side. And so, oh, BV Finance is uh, ETH based too. Oh, is it? Yeah. So you can just go from your browser real quick. Beefy.com. Right there. Uh, it's on the shirt. Oh, all right. I, I was about to say, it's not familiar because I saw it on your shirt. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> We're making someone go to Beefy Finance. You don't even have to go through your wallet. Just go to, it's a website. Web, yeah, browser. Brave. Oh, you don't use Brave. He doesn't use Brave people. <laughs> Not gonna make it. And who? While we do this, Beefy Finance. Ooh, okay. Click on la launch app. Okay. So you said you're a DGen. Do you go an I'm LP? I'm a collector, not a DGen. Um, a LP pools at all on tokens. I'm not a DGen. I'm I'm, a, I'm more of a collector than a DGen. I'll, all right. I'll I was gonna show you the insane amount of APYs and APRs within Beefy Finance. Okay. If you want to get some of your DeFi on. Okay. Check out Beefy Finance. This is, episode is not brought to you by Beefy Finance. I'm trying to make it. <laughs> so this is a wag me. All right. So we're going to do, let's see, pull up. Okay. We're going to see if we can do a live Twitter space while TJ, we want to just do a quick shout out you and Captain Shit Poster. We love you too. If you, the two of you guys that are left could tweet and retweet and share and share this room and send me your Solana wallet addresses, I will send you an NFT as well. I love you all. Here we go. All right, pull up your, open up your Solana wallet. Okay. We're, we are sending an NFT live on the air. Wait, which wallet do I need? Burner, Flare, because we got some Flare. And then we have Yuri over there. He hates Solana. Solani. Yuri. Uh, uh, do you have any other Solana wallet on you? Do you have a Soul Flare? I literally opened the Solana wallet to buy a Solana NFT that a friend of mine recommended, and then he told me not to buy it because it broke. So, I swear to God. All right. Do you you have a Solana wallet? Let's give. We'll give away one. We'll, we'll give away an NFT. I don't, it's, it's, all right. You got some NFTs there. Yay. So go to that. Click on deposit. Click on Solana. We're going to send. Because you clicked import new wallet. You clicked import wallet rather than create. And we just sent you a mutant you. Thank you, Solana Store. This is a shout out to Solana Spaces and Solana Mobile. I know you don't like me because I uh, brought a lot of people in and you paid them all $10 to come rather than me paying $800 for you to allow anyone to come. So, yeah, I love you. You know I do. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, so... Well, we figure he's got a new NFT now. And what's funny is he has $10 in USDC, but he doesn't have any soul, so he can't do anything with it. We, we, we might, I might have to, I'm, I feel bad. I might have to send him a little soul so he can get into some DeFi with that. All right. Well, maybe uh, we'll, we'll, we'll shout out to our front community and see what we can get from our front community. Maybe they can help that out. Okay. So 10 seconds, words of wisdom. Don't click links. Okay. What about if it's a Twitter link? Nah, it's not worth it. In Twitter to like set reminder or listen to a space? 
Uh, I mean, to listen to a space, you know, that's different. But, uh, you know, listen, don't click Discord links and nobody wants to manage your community. They're lying to you. Yeah. No. No. I'm definitely not trying to manage your community. They're trying to take your money. Don't do it. Yeah, no. If you're trying to find community members or community mods, go within your community. That is yeah. the best way to do it. People that answer questions and know your project, that rather than say like, "Hey, I want to manage your Discord." Uh, yeah, can you send this link now? Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. All right. It has been amazing talking to you, one. So much. All right. Give us a follow, Player One Taco. Yes. So. We're going to go find some other people and go see what else we got going on. Your player one taco. The number one. That top one. The second one's a fakie. There's like six of them. I got like six fakies. So what I like to say is I will never ask for money in a text. It will always be in a video. Yes, sir. I'm in here. All right. Let's go find other DJs. Oh, my God. We found... What's up? What's up? What's up? Y'all already know where we at. We're at Crypto Monday. Crypto Monday with my boy Player Taco. Yes, this is the this is our Twitter space. I, I'm actually glad to pop in here today. How are you doing, Abby? I'm doing great. For those that don't know and can't see, who are you? Uh, <laughs> Abtrax. <laughs> yes, my I go by Abtrax. Uh, I'm one of the Crypto Monday lead organizers in New York City. Um, and then I connect a lot of dots with a lot of different people within our crypto Web3 space. We're hyper connectors. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, I'm doing a replay of the interview with Susan Cummings, who's the CEO of Grand Theft Auto, co founder of Grand Theft Auto and Pediverse. I was in that space and you didn't bring me up. Uh, yeah, because it was just an interview. It's a replay interview. That's the only reason why. Sad. Now, but see, here's the thing. What I realized is the reason why I don't go, I tried two weeks in a row of going live on Twitter. What I realized is it's better. I don't want to compete. There's too many Twitter spaces. So it's better just to have the interview and replay it in a Twitter space. That's, that's, so that's what my motto is. So this week, it's Susan Cummings again. Next week, I have Miha, who's the founder of Beam.xyz, which is a Web3 streaming platform. The week after, I have Mike Evron, who created the first dark web, Web3, uh, some of the Silk Roads that did a bid for selling drones and, and cannabis on the internet. How you all got into Bitcoin. How did I get no, that's how everyone else with Silk Road got into Bitcoin. No, here's the funny thing. Um, when I first seen Silk Roads, uh, my boy showed me because he wanted to buy some weed. And when I went on in, I'm like, yo, this sell crack and meth and all of this shit on here. Like, this shit is crazy. Um, but also, my experience was a lot of people that I know was scammers, so to say. And how they dealt with Bitcoin is they used to load up their profiles and go to the ATM. So when my friend called me and says, I ah, put all your money in Bitcoin, I knew what it was, but I didn't know exactly what it was. But once I went in and went down the rabbit hole, I was there ever since. I fell in love. Nice, nice. So we're here at Sean's Irish Pub. Great host for this. Um, it's been a great Crypto Monday. And who did you have tonight? Today we had Dr. Alex Kahana. It's Kahana. Um, I can't get into the specifics about what he does, but he pitches, he goes all around the world with this blockchain thing. He's in the UN speaking. And actually, if you tune into the Ab Lab, YouTube, the Ab Lab, the Ab Lab Digital, you can actually rewatch this uh, interview today. And you can see me live asking questions, I think. Absolutely. Yes, you are. <laughs> All, right. All right. So as we've been ending every interview with every person, 10 seconds, words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. Don't limit yourself to what people say that you are or can do, because if you put your mind to it, you could do anything that you want to do. That's number one. Number two. Follow your own dreams. Don't follow no one else's. All right. Nice. Abs. Oh, my last one. Uh, 
even though there's a lot of bullshit drama and misdirection, still follow crypto, still invest in it, still tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend about it, because it is something that is coming, and they're trying to confuse us with all of the misdirection. But if you stay consistent with it and you get a clear understanding of how to use it, that's where it works. I did not grow up chasing the SP 500. I did not grow up chasing stocks. That's what they believe. They have everybody believing that crypto is all about stocks and it's not. It's about actually using the cryptography language to build uh, different situations, different products within using this service. And I'm just going to leave it at that because I feel like I'm going into the weeds on this one. All right, we can always go in the weeds on a different time. Yeah. All right, abs, always. All right, we're going to go find some other DJs to go talk to. Absolutely. This has been a great night tonight. Yes, tune in tomorrow, 7 p.m. Listen to that replay of Susan Cummins. She is uh, my hero because I grew up on Grand Theft Auto, and to be able to interview somebody with a game that I grew up on, that actually a game that I know made a billion dollars, and there has never been a game like that ever created ever 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 and uh a new project is gonna set that same type of tone awesome thank you all right let's hunt other dgens as we're going around hello do you mind if this this conversation is live on air okay the were you saying no as you didn't want it to be all right I respect the DJs. My name's Taco, so I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> hey, you gotta respect it. Nice Taco. Nice. What's your name? Andy. Andy, we'll talk later because love music apps. What is your name? Andy. Hi, Andy. Nice to, meet you. nice to meet you. We'll be back later. We'll be back later. All right. We have DJs over here. We're, we 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 come, we come of the same hairstyle, I think. Sometimes. How was your night tonight? Uh, interviewing Dr. Alex. I got to tell you, this was an awesome, you know, evening. You know, anytime we were just talking, you can spend time with your community is, is great. Uh, you know, the NYC community is, you know, there are a lot of people have been coming here since 2018. Uh, what's your favorite blockchain? Uh, what's my favorite blockchain? Well, I, I'm a Bitcoin fan and okay. I like Ethereum. All right. Uh, after that, um, I'm a huge fan of Cello. Okay. Cello is a good is a good chain. What about Polkadot? Uh, I'm I like Polkadot. Look, I'm a, hold on a second. Go to him. Oh, we gotta go. What is your name? I'm Peter. Nice to meet you. Hi, Peter. I'm Player One Taco. Hi, great to meet you. Nice to meet you. I just go by Taco. What is, what is it that you do? Um, I started a uh, built a uh, company called Go NFT Yourself. I we like that. We we built a custom uh, a platform that allows people to have their own custom branded NFT storefronts. So I was really inspired by NBA Top Shot and how they made it really easy for the non-crypto people to get involved, buy NFTs, sign up, get a wallet. And I was like, this should be available to anyone who's got super fans. Whether you've got you know a local band that has a thousand super fans or you're a, a big brand that has millions of customers. How do we make NFTs accessible to your entire fan base? So I went out and this is the problem I set out to solve and built a platform. And now we've got um, um, some politicians. Um, what kind artists. of po what politicians do you have? Um, we um, launched a site for actually of all places, the Morris County, uh, uh, a local uh, uh, county political organization in Morris County, New Jersey. Okay. All right. So, we did some NFTs for them. We were going to do some NFTs for actually a congressman out of their district, but then when whole NFT we NFTs collapsed, or uh, he was like, oh, I'm worried about any sort of um, bad press or publicity, bad publicity I'll get out of it. So he actually scrapped the project. But we were going to do NFTs for a congressional candidate. Um, and actually, we're, we're in talks right now with a, a governor and some congressional candidates to do some NFTs for them. But outside of New Jersey. Okay, so we're going to talk for just a millisecond as we work to find your site on Twitter. I'm assuming you're on Twitter. Yes. So that would be Go, Go NFT. Go NFT yourself. Let's see if I can write upside down. I can. Go NFT yourself. I found it. 
We're giving you a follow. That's Thanks. it? Yes, that is it. All right. And so we're going to then share this post in our space so that those that are listening can find this. Boom. All right. So um, as we're talking about going up to yourself, um, basically almost tokenization of oneself or for any campaign or any piece like that. Well, it's for any brand or artist to sell NFTs to their entire fan base. So I think everyone sort of talks about, oh, how do you get a billion people into crypto? And I'm saying, no, it's the other way around. How do you make the technology just disappear into the background so that Custodial and non-custodial so, wallets? So it's actually, um, we used a, um, a, a non-custodial wallet uh, called the Taurus wallet, which I think rebranded themselves as Web3 Auth or Web3 Wallet or something like that. Um, but it, it creates a great user experience. One click social will sign up with Google, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Your email address, you get a wallet. Keys and, all and, and I don't see your keys. You have, you have control of your own keys. So that's perfect. Um, Click and drop for art. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's it's like almost like a store merch, a mer custom merch store in a way. Yeah. 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 No. So no. So that's their wallet. So their wallet is great, which just is easy for the non crypto fans. But then we integrated with um, Stripe, so that anyone could buy the NFTs with a credit card, no crypto needed. Um, you buy a work of art. You buy a membership to something you buy some digital collectible it gets minted put right in the, your wallet and then you own and control it and and they can they send it off to a different wallet yeah they can send it from there wherever they can transfer it wherever they want they can then connect that same wallet to OpenSea, rarible other marketplaces go sell it there one of the things i did not like about um nba top shot that i was sort of inspired by is that when you buy an nft there you can only then sort of resell it on their marketplace. It's a very sort of closed ecosystem. To me, that was against the whole ethos of decentralization and interoperability. So I love the fact that we're just providing that first buyer experience and someone can sell it, resell it on any other marketplace. It truly is their asset for them to own and control. Nice, nice. Uh, what chain? Um, so we're using Polygon to keep the minting costs low um, and allow people to sell lower priced NFTs. Okay. All right. Nice. Are you planning to expand chain so people could la decide which chain to launch on? Yeah. At, so at some point, yeah, the plan would be to, you know, expand into other chains. But for now, we're sort of keeping it at that. Um, the, the other thing we're considering is aside from one-off one -off NFT storefronts for individuals is to build some storefronts around specific verticals. So, for example, one for like the music industry or one... Um, for um, fundraising that can be used for politicians, causes, charities. Um, um, we're looking into uh, exploring one for NFTs as a loyalty and membership program for wineries and craft breweries. All right, yeah, no, I, I, I have some things in my head I might want to connect you with. Cool. Yeah. So I think, I think there's all kinds of sort of, aside from one-offs, ways to create some sort of verticals around some different industries and get some momentum that way. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what's your favorite blockchain? Um, at this point, I'm going to say Ethereum um, with, you know, Polygon as the, you know, layer two. Okay. All right. So well, I, love, I love the concept of just being able to create smart contracts and, you know, just p p add, add all this value, um, you know, just un unlock whatever sort of creativity you can of programmable digital collectibles what was one of the things you so we were here at crypto mondays new york uh we had dr alex talking what was one of the things that you took away from him talking um i i enjoyed hearing him talk about um how in latin america and africa how they're sort of leapfrogging us in certain ways because they're not their their economic models are different and so and so the biggest thing is like like we don't realize it but the world economy up until 200 years ago was all peer-to-peer -peer. and their economies are still in many ways still peer-to-peer -peer. and so it's funny we're building technology to bring us back to the way economies operated for tens of thousands of years 
and we just uh, sort of assume, oh, it's these centralized banks and centralized economy. But no, th th this is a new construct. Um, and, and if you can create peer-to-peer -peer networks, you can cr add so much more value or, or let the, the buyer and seller control the value and the ownership instead of all these middlemen that extract value along the way. Okay. What, what, what did you think? Um, I liked it. I love the pieces on DIDs. And, you know, for me, uh, one of the big things, I'm a DeFi maxi. Uh, I'm chain agnostic, but I believe that like SBT, soul bound tokens, um, you know, control of one's access of information means a lot. But what it also means is I get to control what information I'm giving you. Um, I use this story. I've used this story for the last two years of DIDs is... Uh, going to bars, you know, I used to work, I, I used to work security for bars and, um, you know, we would have, uh, some of these alpha guys working security sometimes that were just in that spot to fill that spot because it was needed and they'd be checking IDs and like, you know, some pretty girl would come up and they're like, Oh, you live on height street. I live on like Ashbury. I'm two bucks away from you, you know? And you're like, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Yeah, so, and, and so along the same lines, back sort of before blockchain sort of took off, someone told me about, I, I can't think of the guy's name, but he came up with a model of saying we need to move from a CRM model, customer relationship model, to a vendor relationship model. And so the concept is where people own and control their own data, which is what you're alluding to, but what, what's, what, what's needed on top of that is some way to con for people to easily control who has access to what information and sort of AI or rule-based assistance and stuff to help you find the vendors that fit your profile. So that if I know that, hey, here's your spending habits, here's your browsing habits, here's you know your medical information and your health information that I can now offer, you know, hey, this would be a restaurant you would like. Hey, this is be a place you would enjoy for vacation. Hey, here's a good doctor for you. Um, like, like that's the way we need to move to this ve a vendor relationship model, and and you know, a really exciting opportunity. You know, we were. And go buy your competitor, and who's got the best AI algorithm, but. If you change the, the, the business model to where people own and control their own data, mo their own data, you're going you're to put them out of business, and, and they won't they won't they won't compete against.